All right, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a countdown. Are you ready? Yep. Five, four, Purple. three, two, one. Hello, future friends. Thank you for tuning into our show. We are Mistakes Being Made, a live play Dungeons & Dragons podcast from Portland, Oregon. Um, if you're new to the show, you can catch up with our episodes on our Twitch stream or on YouTube. Um, if you want to interact with our uh, our social media accounts, you can uh, follow us on all of the social medias. They are included in the body of every Twitch episode and also on uh, the body of our YouTube channel uh, episodes. Um, if you want to check out our Twitter, that's probably the best way to find out all of our other social media links. Um, our Twitter account is MBMRPG, and you can find uh, the pinned tweet has all of the ways to connect with the show. Um, if you are previously, or were previously, a Twitch Prime subscriber, it is July, and we are in a new month. So if you want to continue to help us support the show, um, feel free to use your Twitch Prime subscription to give us a boost and a, some wind in our sails, as it were. Um, additionally, we'd like to thank the following individuals for their help in making us better. Uh, thanks to Axe and Shield for their awesome combat risers, which will be used tonight. Thanks to uh, Dwarven Forge for their amazing dungeon terrain, which is used every single week. Uh, thanks to Sirenscape, which always makes our, uh, our sessions better. Um, and thanks to Rudy Rutenberg and Satine Phoenix for their advice and help along the way. Uh, tonight's session, we are going to likely use um, content from Tome of Beasts from Cobalt Press. It is an amazing book, and if you don't have it, I recommend you go out and get it because it is awesome. Um, so with that, let's meet the players and their characters. Aaron, you are playing? Uh, Vizago Viz Viz 3. <laughs> It says here, incredibly trustworthy tiefling bard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Doug, who are you playing in uh, Xenos High Hill, uh, halfling wizard, and pirate captain. And pirate captain, officially. Mm-hmm, yeah. officially. And? Howard. Oh, Howard. <laughs> my name is Howard. Uh, my character's name is Sarsarel, the submerged half-elf cleric, chosen champion of Umberly. Mm-hmm. Um, so last week, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a recap. Um, and this, I'm actually going to go back further than last week. Upon uh, returning from the Rumbled Tide Citadel, the party visit, visited Abernathy, uh, a red wizard, uh, to learn more about the items that they acquired. Having discussed the items' powers, they went on their merry adventure. Um, Sarsarel won a entered and won a meat pie eating contest at the Fairwinds Tavern. So sure, congratulations yeah. to Thank you on you. that. Uh, Xenos had his spyglass stolen by a gang of thieves working for the local enclave of the Red Wizards. Ooh. Um, the party gave chase and, uh, to the thieves and were successful at stopping some, uh, but not all from getting away. <laughs> I blame the ranger. Um, Foxfire learned... He's a rogue. He's a rogue. He's a rogue. Um, <laughs> he's, that's probably why he's upset. <laughs> Foxfire learned that the thieves were hired by the Red Wizards to steal the spyglass and were going to deliver it to the Red Wizard Enclave. Uh, Sarsarel and Xenos met a hag named Granny Morgan in the sewers who offered to provide them the location of the thieves in return for a favor. A long black hair from a pirate lord is all she asked for. I mean, it seems pretty simple. Right? Harmless. Yeah, harmless even. Uh, the party met, um, following this encounter, the party met uh, with Captain Mara Fairwind, a pirate lord and owner of the Fairwind Tavern. And also, long black hair. Also owner of some very straight, very long black hair. Um, she discussed uh, with them what they knew of the, the Legion of the Amber Flame and Rasun, the massive red dragon who the Legion worshipped. Um, they also discussed the connection of Archon the Cruel and the Cult of the Dragon, who Mara noted were staying in Emmerich's hold. Um, and Captain Windstrider asked for the party's aid in coordinating a meeting with herself and the other pirate lords to discuss what should be done about the marauding goblinoid force. So with that, we're going to, as we did last week, take a half step back and allow Vizago, who was in the room with the conversation with uh, Captain Windstrider, to have his chance to interact with Captain Windstrider. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, Aaron, is there anything that Zago would like to discuss with Captain Norton straight on? So, <clears throat> we can all agree Volgrim uh, sucks. I think it would be in everyone's best interest if we all agreed that maybe everyone in this room is against Volgrim? She says that she has had her issues with Volgrim in the past. Um, what? Why is it? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, Volgrim is another pirate mm-hmm. lord yes. who is, um, I'm more informing Doug because I know you know who he is, <laughs> um, is another pirate lord who is a fire giant um, and is one of the five members of the, the ruling council of the pirates. Um, so she says, I have had my differences with Volgrim in the past. Um, I know that acting against Volgrim at this point would likely weaken the... Openly acting, sure. The pirate, uh, the pirate nation? I don't say we stab him in the back, per se, but perhaps lightly poke. Okay. You want to you wanna aggravate him? No, I I want to take something from him. I'm pretty good. Haven't at you it. taken enough from him? No. The rumors aren't true then. No, the rumors are true. But see, um, the last time it was kind of more of a trade. Okay. Um, there is someone that he's keeping that I don't think he deserves to have anymore. Someone he's not publicly admitting. Um, I don't think he'll publicly admit that he lost if he lost him. Okay. So I feel like we would be safe in doing that, but at the same time, just a little jab. She says, are you talking about uh, the elf bard that he has? Yes. Okay. She says that um, she is aware of uh, the elf bard, Uh his prisoner. Um, And she says... He is actually set to stand trial for crimes against a pirate lord. Interesting. When is this trial? Uh, she gives. Uh, she says, "Well, the interesting thing about the um, the pirates and the rule in Imrik's hold is it's very chaotic, and a schedule's not generally kept. And at this point, um, there has to be a number of pirate lords that are willing to." sit for the trial, and Volgrim doesn't have the, the grouping that he needs. Okay. So They need at least three, and he's got two, including himself. Hmm. Okay. So right now, we're at a standstill. Mm-hmm. That's what I needed to know. Okay. Because that means we can get our other things done without worrying about that proceeding. She says, yeah. would you like to know where he's held? I would love to know where he's held. Last I heard, it was his dungeon. Um, well, once he committed the, the crime um, and Volgrim questioned him, he moved him w- up to await the trial to Imrik's Keep, which is the keep where the pirate lords meet. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Imrik's Keep. How, I, this, is, this is a bit more out of character. Okay. Did we mention Emmerich's Keep before for something? No. It's, it's not. It's ringing a bell. Uh, no. So, um, I think if, if it was mentioned in, in the past, it yeah. was probably mentioned because that's where um, Mara Winstrider wanted to have the meeting that of the is Pirate why. Lords. Okay. Um, so, that is where official government business is done. Official. Official. I, I did have a question. Board. What pirate lords does he have on board for the trial right now? Um, he has a tiefling that okay. um, is a pirate lord. Um, the tiefling's name is, if you give me a second, I will scroll to it. Visago. Vis- no. Um, it's yes. not Visago. Um, Promotion. Because you, you're going to just be like, yes, okay, well, we're not doing that. It, um, is. <laughs> it is Asnar uh, Bolivar. He is a, an aging tiefling pirate lord. I mean, so he needs one more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if we were able to offer up another pirate lord for this trial, uh-huh. that might be a leverage for the, him to show up to the meeting. It would definitely be leverage yeah. for him to oh, show good. up to the meeting. So let's just do that. Because you would have to go there anyway. So yeah. I that's will, an excuse for us to go where she, she's being kept. She says, 
Yeah. I'll go ahead and we can talk about the politics of the Pirate Lord. Um, she says, um, Volgrim and uh, Asnar are long, uh, have long been allies. Um, and she has an ally named Teldar. Um, and they kind of offset each other. And there is a um, another merchant um, of symbi symbian descent, which okay. you know symbia because that that's where your fence is at, is at um, Rash Dendar, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and his name is Gastaban the Bold. Now you know Gastaban because um, he happens to have a gnome in his um, in, on his estate that is known for mechanics. Um, he's a clock smith, a uh, machine smith. Um, a worshiper of Gond. Right? A worshiper of Gond, mm -hmm. who is known to have made black powder. Um, and he's known to have made black powder specifically for one Vaziago, what, Vaz Vazago Free. I don't know which. Um, when he pure stole hearsay. things from, Emer uh, from Volgrim's estate. He says wearing three of the things he stole. What? What? No. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Gasaban has a reason to not, not really side with uh, Volgrim, um, and Volgrim won't come to the table until he has what he has Nickus, which is the the gnome, um, and that has that is nothing that hasn't already been kind of explained to the party before. Um, so. Um, so you're kind of at an impasse here. Um, the other thing that you might find interesting, or Xenos might find interesting, is when Vizago was talking with Nikus um, to get him to sell him the black powder, um, he also has plans for a giant tube-like device that black powder can be put huh, in. Oh, interesting. And then uh, something heavy could be shot out of it. Large um, metal ball, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, a yeah. number of things. Uh, balls so on things. balls on chains to uh, okay. Okay. do wonders to sails and rigging. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, a number of things. Um, okay. Okay. So one of the things that you guys discovered when you got to town, which probably wouldn't have meant anything to Xenos in the beginning, was that uh, Nikos' shop was um, demolished. It was raided, and um, his tools were either stolen or destroyed. Okay. Um, and that you could pretty much put two and two together that that was Volgrim's um, act of revenge, revenge, or just feudal, like feudal mm -hmm. rage. So, okay. um, is there anything else that uh, that Zago would want to say to Captain Fairwind or Wind, Windstrider? Uh, yeah, I suppose there's one other thing. Um, it's the question that kind of comes up in most of these conversations, which is whether she has heard anything about the crew of the Hellish Wind or not. Uh, she does know about the Hellish Wind. Yeah. So she says that she had been told that um, they were given marching orders by Volgrim mm -hmm. to sail to Chult to look for something. Hmm. She doesn't okay. know exactly what, um, but she believes that it has something to do with um, his dealings with um, the cult of the dragon. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So, is that, that it? That was the only thing you wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. So, is there anything that e any either of you... Whose dealings with the cult of the dragon? Volgrim. The oh, Volgrim. Volgrim. Volgrim deals with the cult of the dragon. Which you, they already character, knew. knew. Yeah. Jeffrey knew. Jeffrey knew. Um, but that might be the first time that that you that guys... That Sarsarot would find out. Yeah. And he didn't necessarily know. No, he did we, not know because we Jeffrey because didn't Jeff tell Parker him. Yeah. Shared that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so for the viewers at home, if you missed the episode that we're talking about, um, Archon the Cruel, which is um, my best friend Joe Magnello's character, <laughs> um, he um, is leading the Cult of the Dragon and has had confrontation, uh, not not actual confrontations, <laughs> but these. Uh, this group of uh, merry adventurers have seen him in the past do nefarious things. Um, and then there was a heist at Volgrim's estate that um, 
Archon was at, but the char any character that would have known who Archon was was not present to see Archon, uh, which was kind of funny. Um, so, Doug, is there anything Xenos would like After to After that meeting? Um... Well, this is still... No, oh, okay. I, I, still, is, still there. If you want to tip anything in, otherwise we can move on. Xenos asked what, um, how one becomes a pirate lord. Um, well... Gotta have Jared. aspirations. I'm, I'm already a captain, so what, what's next? She, right? says, she, she says you need to have a, a fleet of ships that sail under your banner. A solid resume. Ooh. A solid define resume. define fleet. Are we talking two ships? Ten ships? Uh, the more the better. Um, but, it, you know, quality over quantity, too. So okay. if you could get two amazing ships, then okay. maybe that would be... Okay. So I need a fleet of ships? Uh, there would need to be an opening. Um, right that now. can be arranged. I mean, I'm, because yeah. We, okay. can, we okay. can't we can't have even numbers because otherwise, um, you know, we could have a split. So if something happened to Volgram, or yeah. or even better. Yeah. I mean, we could just if we made like multiple pirate lords, as long as we kept it odd. Yeah. We'd be yeah, fine. yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Like just uh, like Supreme Supreme Court justices. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, we could have like seventeen pirate lords. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Thirteen's Kay. a pretty good number too. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's pretty evil. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Thirteen. Okay. Yeah. The glory of Umberlay. All right. Yeah. So opening, or I need to find and other pirate decent, lords and to recruit. And a decent resume. And a decent resume. And a decent resume. resume. You know. Yeah. Letter Kay. of recommendation. Yeah. Letter of recommendation. Or yeah. our letter of uh, what was it? Oh, I'm forgetting the <laughs> Doctor Horrible joke. Letter of indignation. Oh, from yeah. the uh, from the mayor. Pleasure. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she says, okay. you know, or you could, you know, you could sail on, under my banner for a while if you'd like. No. Thanks, though. <laughs> Flat <laughs> turned down. Okay. Yeah. Um, and did you guys, so she had, because Xenos was asking, like, what is in it for you guys as mm -hmm. far as monetary uh, funds go? And she did mention. 6,000. Yeah, she that did. she could pay each a thousand gold pieces. Well, each a thousand gold pieces and a gold piece, a thousand gold pieces to the crew. Mm -hmm. and or, this, and this is for what? Arranging the meeting. Arranging, arranging the meeting. Arranging the meeting and, and trial now. And kind of acting towards mm -hmm. her interests in this meeting, which her interests oh. are to get the pirate lords together and then start coming up with a plan to deal with these goblins. Okay. I mean... That, that doesn't sound too hard. The, having the meeting sounds like the difficult part. Yeah, yeah. probably. You could probably do that. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, or yeah. she was willing to offer um, a favor of a pirate lord to be named later. But you guys didn't seem to be interested in that. That's pretty good. Depends. That I'd, I'd, That's essentially like having one of the... I mean, how many power lords are There's there? There's five. Five? That's like having one-fifth of the king's favor in your pocket. And considering uh, what we're doing, I mean, that one-fifth is maybe a little bit stronger than the other fifths. <laughs> Depending on how successful you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, Bizarro I, has never not been successful, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> He's lucky. Xenos is having a hard time quantifying what the favor could be. So I mean, um, that's that money is easier to, to quantify. It is easier to quantify. Yeah, sure. but like, you know. But could you buy a favor from a pirate lord for six thousand gold pieces? No, no. I don't know. The Those answer is no. More expensive. <laughs> yeah, you could buy a favor from a pirate lord, but it would cost you probably more, more than, than six thousand gold. gold pieces. Yeah. yeah. And then you know maybe maybe a favor, and then maybe a teensy weensy favor on the side. Well, she says, how about this? Let's focus on the task at hand, and then once we get into uh, celebrating our successes, we can discuss exactly what you want. The, the two offers are, remain on the table. Okay. That's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you guys want to do now? Once meet, you've left the, Meet with the sage, I think. You could sure. meet with the sage. So just so just to clarify before you leave the um, the Fairwind, 
Tavern. Mm -hmm. You guys are staying at the Fairwinds Tavern, so um, you have that room paid for. They've already. cleaned up the vomit from the fish pond. That was downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this conversation had smells. happened a, quite a bit later. I didn't so. get, I didn't mm. get my window fixed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Sarsarel men did that. Yeah. So. Um, it's my window. People just jump through it all the time. So. <laughs> weird. Um, so yeah, you can go. You can go seek out the the sea sage. It is quite a. It is quite late at night. But if you mm. want to wake him up, you certainly can do that. No, wait till morning. Go wake him up. Yeah. Um, you could also go meet with the hags if you want to do that. Um, you have what they're I've asking. I've got the hair. I think we do a long rest. You got the what? The hair. The hair. Good. Um, the hair of a pirate lord. What? Why are we? Why are we giving the hair of a pirate lord away? Be well, we we're give, not giving it away. We're trading it. For I'm, I'm assuming Vizago wasn't there when the no, draw was made. Correct. Oh, no, yeah. no. We, <laughs> so, the two of us I mean, were in the we sewer. We exactly yeah. shake on it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But um, she seemed like an honest hag. She's Very said, trustworthy. So I'm going to oh, go ahead and make that yeah. check now. So you can either use <laughs> Arcana or History, whichever you uh, oh, would man. prefer. I get a plus three for Arcana <laughs> or a plus three now, for Now, remember, history. this is the same day as uh, the fight. Mm -hmm. So if you've I used only, your luck... I only have one re-roll from favor and six re-rolls from the dice. So okay. I, I right. Not enough re-rolls. Not enough. I'm going to go ahead and use one of those right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. No. Do I want to actually use the dice for the first time? I think you might. I feel like you've got six charges. I on mean, it. yeah. Uh, 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 no, I don't have my temporary hit points. Anymore. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use it. Okay. Oh, That's yes. That's pretty good. Is that a natural 20? That's a natural sure 23. Okay. Uh, you know, okay. history or So what you know better. about hags. Yeah. Um, well, what do you want to know about hags? Because you basically know, you oh, know quite a bit. I know all about You don't know hags. 25 yeah. knowledge words. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily know what their vulnerabilities are. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would like to generally know what a hag would do with, Say yeah. a hair of a powerful pirate. Lord. Okay, so <laughs> that's crazy. You know that that the hags that the the hag that they described mm -hmm. meeting Gran, uh, Granny Morgan. Yeah, we tell her we tell her the name. Granny is um, is a is a green hag, mm -hmm. um, and from the description, they are they are very much witches from storybooks. Like their magic doesn't work the same way other caster's magic is but they could do they're not just magically an asshole they're not just magically an asshole get that on a t-shirt uh, <laughs> um also remember pg pg-13 uh, <laughs> um, yeah. but i'm just describing a bodily function yeah exactly um so they are evil they uh love to cause um strife in communities and um, they always get the best of a deal. Um, you also know that, that green hags are fey, um, and so they have a connection to the Feywild. Um, and it is very likely that they could do a curse with a hair. They could possibly clone someone with a hair. They yeah. could transform their body into um, the the owner of said, said hair, um, a number of things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I imagine how we cut back to the scene is this is what Visago is saying. He's like, well, let's see if she had the hair. And then he just starts listing all <laughs> the things. And that is our one-fifth favor with the government of this island. The so favor is getting um, pardoned for giving over the hair. Mm. Oh. Oh, I mean, that is a good catch we could, too. We could do that. I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty piratey, so part of me likes that. Um, what what are we trading for? What's My spyglass. Yeah, so they have your spyglass? Well, they no, they've got a lead. The thieves have it. But so, they know where the thieves are, and our friend does not. What do we know about the thieves so far? Well, they're, they're in, in the sewer, uh -huh. and our ranger got He's lost a in the sewer. Rogue. He's a He's a really, he's a really bad Fox ranger. Fox is with you, and he's like, um, I'm actually a ranger. I know he carries a bow and arrow, and that's I really mean, confusing for you. What, hold on. I, in Zeno's defense, he, he is our captain. Let me, let me just throw this out here. 
has a bow and arrow. Yeah. Right. And so far he's been. He has two swords. Like two thousand more percent effective in the wilds than the city. Yep. Yep. And he's got a name. And his name is Foxfire. That sounds Fox ranger. That's pretty rangery. He's yeah. also an elf. I'm actually. Ah, I'm actually gonna double check to make sure he doesn't have an animal. Companion. Exactly. Racist. <laughs> pretty I'm sure he's got a elf. mouse in his pocket. Yeah, he's got some sort of. Because I'm an elf. No, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, many of I mean, my father's people are rangers. Have we? Okay, have, then. Have we tried tracking down the, the thieves yet? Have we tried having well, we, we chased down the thieves? Yeah, and he got lost in the sewer on his way sewers. back from their little encampment. He made two turns and got lost. Well, no. He, Maybe three turns. I don't he, know. He walked for 45 minutes, and there was a, a number of term, turns that he... I thought he went a little bit, went up, got out of a manhole... And then lost where that manhole was. Uh, no, he... On the way out. Not the way in, because yeah. the way in On the was... Way out, didn't he know where he was? He could make his way back to you guys, just because he he could wander around the city long yeah, enough. But he didn't, where... like, remember yeah. cross streets Not or anything like that. No. Didn't set the GPS to, you know, remember this location. What? Exactly. If only we had the magical GPS. The if Goblin only. PS, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I could, I can't, the I can't use a GPS, system. but if yeah. you want, we I have could, a goblin. Sit there, and I could summon like three sharks. Does In that the help? Sewers? Yes, that'd okay. be fantastic. All right. So I could summon three sharks, uh, but we need to find out where the thieves are. Well, if you blow well, the horn, are you gonna summon merfolk into the sewers? I mean, if there's a merfolk around, there's definitely gonna be like. Hey, that's our horn. I think it's within the three horn? miles, it's right? It's within like three I, miles. I, I can send Enzo swimming through the sewer too in search, oh. but that's yeah. That seems like a good way to kill that's, Enzo. That's <laughs> kind of what I'm thinking. Can so. Enzo? Do, I mean, three miles. I mean, that sounds yeah. like a good way to get poop in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I think Enzo is already pooping in his pocket. That's here. What's the range on this thing? Like a, uh, no, no, over no. under on that's pretty good. So um, you guys don't have to decide this now. We'll go. You guys rest overnight. You yeah. guys recuperate. All right. Aaron gets back his God of Luck powers. We'll take Enzo to a sushi restaurant. Yep. No, we will not. You don't like sushi? No, I don't. You can feed him octopus. Yeah, Enzo loves it though. Surprisingly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, I don't know what his problem is, yeah. but I love this stuff. This is a um, eight arms. And so, yeah. the next day, what would you guys like to do? Got four sets um, of well, I was going to meet with the sage to see if the sage knew anything well, about the the thieves, the um, the hags in particular. Okay. Um, so and he and I were supposed to get together after um, the boat race, and I don't think we ever did. No, because there was a bit more pressing issues. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the goblins attacked. The goblins attacked. And, and then, now there's no and then island. there was a dragon. That, that, yeah, now there's no island. Yeah, and that, there's still a dragon, though. But where's yeah. the dwarven stronghold? Where are the Rumbletide dwarves? The Rumbletide Citadel? Uh, yeah. I guess you would have to go there and find out what happened to the Rumbletide dwarves. Nobody look, really knows. should check. So, um, so you go to see Sage Lawn Jogger, and mm -hmm. he lets you in. And well, that's a good start. And he says, hello, Xenos. What can I help you with today? Well, um, first off, I wanted to apologize for taking so long to get back to you. Um, you know, that's okay, because we already talked about all of the stuff about Rasoon uh, when, we got, when you got here. So okay. That's cool. Um, and, <laughs> and then um, I was one, we had a run-in the other day with the hags and I did, in town. I didn't know if you happen to know anything hags about them. Hags in town. Mm -hmm. They live in the source? Did source? you get in? Did you get a name? Grandma somebody or other. Granny Morgan. See? Um, That's why I, I bring him along. He's got a good memory. And the boat that you captain you is gotta, called. Your, your wisdom is a 18. My it's wisdom called. is a 12. Your memory is better than mine. So he says, it's just science. Granny it's Morgan. Just science. Um, he goes over to his books, and he is going to make a history check real quick. And he comes back, and he says... So, Granny Morgan is the head hag of a coven called the Sisters of Fate. Okay. That dwells in the sewers below um, Emmerich's Hold. And you had an encounter with them. And the mm -hmm. fact that you're still alive speaks to doing well in this encounter. Well, we, we mostly just negotiated 
a deal? Oh, you negotiated a deal. Yeah. What was the deal that you negotiated? Well, uh, my friend here uh -huh. negotiated a deal where we would give uh, a hair of a particular individual to Granny, okay. and then she would get reveal information about where the thieves may have taken my spyglass, which was stolen from me the other day. I casually reach over and I like yoink. <laughs> <laughs> Nice of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're just collecting hairs. He. No, that's probably not going to nah, work. He got your hand away. <laughs> um, he says, okay. Um, and I imagine that your, your spyglass is, is very precious to you? Uh, yeah, the uh, red wizards seem to have an interest in it. The red wizards are involved. That is. Interesting. So green hags and red wizards. Yes. And you're, Sounds like Christmas. And yeah, you're doesn't you're it? between them somehow? Christmas somehow, yeah. I'm not really sure how. Um, she, he says, well, the good news is if you make a deal with the hag, you will get, they will keep their word okay. on the deal. That's good. Um, they typically will get the better end okay. of the deal. And he names um, everything that that Zago named, but yeah. and then also okay. a few more. Okay. Zago's like, see, I told you, and he's in the middle of rearranging his books, so they're all out of order. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and a few more. Um, okay. Putting them back in purposes. with yeah. the yeah. binding. Life was so much simpler when we were out at sea and keel hauling the uh, mutinous first mate. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. well. This is what you get for coming back. Yeah. Around. He you looks get, about on that a little too You get plot points, and uh, <laughs> you notice how he smiles every yeah. time he thinks yeah. about it. <laughs> Plot points and, and potential quests. Um, so he, yeah, that's what he he can tell you about um, that. Um, he you says <clears throat> if you if you have something else that they might be interested in, I'm sure you could offer that as well. But it sounds like you guys have already struck a deal. Of uh, yeah, I don't know what else they would be interested in. Uh, magical items or. Um, well, Zago's got a couple of those to spare. That's true. Do you think they'd like the horn of the merfolk? <laughs> I'm sure that they would love it because they could summon merfolk to they would. be in their pot. It'd be so easy. It's what probably do you sharks taste like? Do they taste like fish or like mammals? Uh, I mean, it's half fish, but it's not super fishy. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's a little gamey. This whole, like fish. whole thing sounds it's like fishy if you've ever me. eaten something off of a grill that you, like you cooked fish on, but you forgot to clean it off. <laughs> no. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so. and so you're like eating a steak. Like, kind of tastes weird. fishy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is there anything else that you want to talk to C Sage? I don't know. Sea Sage would know anything about the um, the thieves guild that's in the sewers. Um, he says that, as far as he knows, there's not an official guild that operates in Emmerich's Hold. Okay. There are a number of gangs that would take jobs from time to time. I, I um, describe the red and black uniform of these guys. He doesn't recognize it. Red um, where did the spyglass come from? Spyglass? I found it. Red and black uniform. Do you describe this, the spyglass? To sure, the I describe it to okay. him. Um, My, an ornate spyglass. He he says that's interesting. Um, yeah, that's why. It's I, interesting uh, that you acquired that. It's the spyglass of Gryffindor. <laughs> I, I, w I was using it as a um, yeah, as a focus the, for my spells. You spouse. must be a true Gryffindor. That's the He's spyglass of the Merfolk. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Hating us oh, right now. He Check says, out this trident I got. He says that that Marvel. spy glass, he knows of the spy glass. Oh, you do? Um, oh, okay. And he it wasn't that, yours, was it? No. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it was... That make this awkward. The last time it was seen, it was stolen by a high hill. Huh? Um, no. From Couldn't. Zentinel Keep. No. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't know any high hills that were thieves ever. No? Interesting. Um... That would be a Didn't 14 on my deception. Key? You had a quest to go to Zentinel Keep oh. because the, Zen, uh, the Black Network was trying to take back Zentinel Keep. Okay. Um, so that was a quest lead that you have not followed up on yet. On um, a, on a I wonder if there's a reason we haven't gone back to Zentinel bell? Keep. Or you, know, uh, like, uh, you might have heard something about mm -hmm. stolen artifacts from Zentinel Keep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he says that, that that spyglass has a number of uh, magical properties to it. One of those being that you can scry on other planes of existence. That now that you mention it, I, I did see something a little odd the other day. I'm 
sure you but, do. But, um, yeah, no, I, I just remember it kind of looking neat and shiny when I first picked it up. But I, I don't know who this High Hill uh, that would have stolen it, who that could possibly be. Isn't so. your last name High Hill? He says... What a coincidence. He says um, it was actually... <laughs> It was actually Bobo High Hill, which you recognize as your grandfather's name. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, Bobo might have left it lying around the house. The black and red uniforms they described, mm-hmm. do they match the um, mercenary guild that was in this area? Uh, so the, that is the Black Network? Yeah, the Black um, Network. The Black Network doesn't, they just wear all black. Oh, okay. They don't um, have any accent and and colors. the minis that I used were yeah. black and red. Yeah. The actual description of the the thieves was yeah, gray, right? they were wearing just dark, nondescript cloaks over normal. Oh, uh, okay. I was like, oh, it, those are f- I know where they are. <laughs> the yeah. dark cloaks. They wanted to hire us. Yeah. yeah. So, um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they did to go clean out Sentinel yeah. Keep, which you yeah. guys have no interest in doing. No. Um, <laughs> So really like maybe to, to maybe to design a topiary for them. Yeah, I understand you. Quite no, uh, no uh, I, I don't, but I know a guy <laughs> who. Um, by the way, we should check the doc because that's going to be hilarious. It's it's about the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah, that's. Um, he okay. says, is there any other anything else? Well, before we we talked about maybe sh- sh- sharing pointers on some spells and whatnot, but um, we can have that conversation some other time. I'm he's he's willing really to have up. that conversation another time. Uh, he says that he believes um, a conversation like that would take several hours, and you probably don't have the time to do that. Right I I, I would really like to recover my hags? spyglass. Hmm? Any re- any reason we should or should not go see the hags? Uh, well, if you want to get the spyglass back, that's probably your I mean best. That to All right. do it. And Visago will activate the transition white by saying, Oh, we are dealing with thieves and mercenaries and gangs. So I do know the one place where you might find out more. It's a dangerous journey, but if you're interested, I can take you. And then the star wipe? Yeah, and then we're at the at ta- uh, the tavern. Um, which, which, oh, the, <laughs> the powder keg? The powder keg, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> you guys, is Joffrey there fighting by any chance? No, Joffrey went through the portal. I know, no, he's, he's not, not, not to be gone. seen. <laughs> you guys might see, find him someday. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, so, you go to the powder keg. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I've described the powder keg to everyone, but for the audience at home, the powder keg is a bar. Uh, in town that is like the diviest of dive bars um, that has sawdust on the floor just because it's easier to clean up blood that way uh, to sweep the sawdust off than to wipe up the blood. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a gnome behind the bar that has a very gruff voice um, and a hook for a hand. Um, She's really nice though. It helps with the face. And there is one patron that is passed out at the bar it is fairly early in the day so all the glasses have jagged edges like they're just broken bottles yeah <laughs> um and when you walk in the gnome is using the same bar uh, bar rag to wipe the bar and then clean glasses so the glasses are all smudged um and he hey, says wipe the glasses here we have five food and drink he says um welcome we're not we're not quite open yet, but uh, you guys can have a, have a seat if you want. Oh, They're, good. Most of the tables are free. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and sit the bar here. Um, listen. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> hey, listen, my friend. Um, I'm in disguise. Oh, yeah, you're in disguise. <laughs> you have a little fake mustache? Yeah. Uh, no, it's a fake goatee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and a members only jacket. Uh, a <laughs> members only jacket. <laughs> Uh, and then his hair is tied up in a man bun. Nice. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so just just so you guys know, my I have a different name when I'm undercover. It's what is that? Vasaho. No, I thought it was Doe. Vasa. Vasa no. Doe. I think it's both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can have multiple identities. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, friend, I, I was wondering. I wanted to talk to you before other customers come in because. Um, I was in the um, less reputable uh, tavern. 
Mm -hmm. The less reputable tavern. Yeah. yeah. I, I personally enjoy your tavern. Oh, mm. thank you. Yeah. Um, you know. And one of the reasons is my friend was right. In that very tavern. Uh, by a gang in the sewers. Okay. And I was wondering uh, whether you've heard any notions. <laughs> Um, make a persuasion check, and are you offering money? Uh, I, I'm not now, but depending on if that's where he's motioning, there okay. might be a gold piece that's floating around. Okay. Good vibes of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Oh, it's a new day. Man, that sucks. Okay, what'd you get? No, I used, oh. I used a second luck point. Oof! It's not meant to be. <laughs> okay. He says, uh, no, doesn't sound familiar. I no? don't know any gangs that hang out in the sewers. No. I'm going to send uh, motive on that. Um, okay. Uh, that is a, oh, what, what's in, that'd be perception? 27. Mm, insight. Insight? Insight. Also a 27. Okay. Um, you believe that he may or may not be telling the truth with that, but he says, if you're looking for underworld contacts, you should probably meet up with the Black Network. They would be here at any uh, later in later in the day. They typically don't arrive before noon. Mm. Well, maybe if we're I mean nobody in the underworld seems to be up and running just yet. Maybe we'd be lucky and the hags aren't all uh they aren't could all be prepped. They could still be They're sleeping like, in. Sleepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tired ish. Yeah. yeah. Makes I mean, it was late at night when she was out chopping people up with that giant butcher's right. knife. It's true. Yeah. So. It's true. You're right. We should. I say casually. We should. We should stay and drink <laughs> until <laughs> she was until just they show up. up. That seems like a good. No, 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 no. She was just chopping up that road. Bartender, right if you could go ahead and hand me your finest mug of ale. With a big old cleaver. <laughs> I mean, he, a big cleaver. He gives you a dirty glass with mm. with some ale in it. Mm. And it tastes. Terrible. Oh, uh, yeah. But it will get you drunk if you drink enough of it. That's no, 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 no. Don't get drunk, Visago. I'll buy you, oh, I'll buy you oh, ale Visago. after we get my spyglass. <laughs> Come on, avocado. Why don't you remind the people at home and, and your party members? Oh, of my flaw? Yeah. That uh, once I start drinking, it's hard for me to stop? <laughs> yeah. Um, taking the ale away, your captain has spoken. We've got... Uh, this is for you. Thank you. We've got a little side <laughs> job to do. We'll come back and you, I'll buy you a nail. Make a persuasion check. Oh, you're so persuasive. I know I am. That's a seven. So when the second one's being handed to me, <laughs> yeah. I go, no, I, we got to get information. Firebolt? Oh, you're going to firebolt the, the, the Zago glass. or the glass? The glass. Okay. okay. Make an attack roll. Oh, that would be a um, 14. Does that hit your AC? Uh, my AC? Yeah. No. Okay. I'm a 15. I was going so for get, the drink. You did, get a, you did get a 10. That's enough to hit the glass. So, <laughs> the, so the glass fames up? Yeah. Yeah. Fizago being a tiefling goes, oh, you. <laughs> and down. <laughs> no! And then goes, let's do whiskey then. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing fire shots. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't backfired. know you rolled that hard, so, you know? 30 minutes later, what are you doing? <laughs> Dragging him unconscious out of the bar. I don't um, know that he's unconscious. He's, he's no? professional. Oh, good. I'm pretty yeah. good. All right, yeah. well, then let's go find the um, the hags. Well, the black work's going to come to us. We just have to maybe stay for another round, and then we'll be, we'll be good. Black network, yeah. Yeah, and they'd it's know possible. where thieves are. By then, the hags will wake up. Yeah, but if we go to the hags with your hair, we can either A, give them the hair. Bad idea. <laughs> right. I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. Bad idea. Two, we could go, aha, and try to slay the hags. Oh. Okay idea. Yeah. yeah. Or three, we get the black necker, we find out where the thieves are anyways, and then we have two new options, which is one, who cares about hags, and two... We now have a new bargaining chip with a different price. Because we know they want it, but we can reestablish the deal. Mm hmm. But it might be harder to fight the hags. True. And they might and the black network might not know anything. Or they could know something. We don't know. Well, you could go have a discussion with the hags and possibly 
walk away from that discussion saying that you needed to think about it and then have a further discussion with the Black Network when you get to that point. There's also um, another thing we haven't considered. Hmm. Who else has long black hair in the island? Oh, I'm sure lots of I'm people. I'm sure there's, there's yeah. people all around, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you think about just grabbing some random black hair and giving it to them and bluffing? Lying to the hags? Yeah. Do you want Sounds to like a good plan to me. Check? You sure. have to make an investigation check with disadvantage, though. Investigation with disadvantage? Is the, okay. is the person at the bar that's passed out by any chance, do they have long black well, hair? Well, hold on a second. <laughs> uh, so the worst one, investigation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I got it. It's right here. Yeah. Well, I'm trained in everything, so it's pretty good. Okay. Um, so that is a uh, nine with this advantage. No, it is not. It, the person behind the bar is not. It, it, it could take you some time to find somebody, but you could do it. I mean, worst case scenario. We go, what? Ha, gotcha. Or you I, was just gonna, I was you just, just going to hit it with a fireball and don't know. Yeah. burn it up on our way out. Mm -hmm. was my plan, but... <laughs> just gonna burn the hair on the way out yeah interesting i kind of like that idea to be honest you didn't tell me the full plan now i'm a little bit more on board with the plan <laughs> okay. so. you knew fire had to be involved come <laughs> that's on that's fair it's true i mean if you guys if you guys are on this i will go with you we will, we will do that okay or we could stay for another round and well let's take our ranger friend with us yeah because yeah. we want to be able to find Fox our Park. way out of the, sewer, the sewer. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Fox Park could definitely find your way out of the sewers. Yeah, he found us after getting out of the sewers. Yeah. Okay. So, so you guys go into the sewers, and as soon as your feet hit the, the, the pavement, not necessarily like the sewers themselves, mm -hmm. um, you hear a voice in your head that sounds very familiar to the voice that you uh, heard last night. Oh, good. And she says, good. I was hoping that you would come and accept the deal that we struck. Um, just a second, and I will be out there. And then she, uh, so this is her. Um, she's so attractive. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I will yeah, describe her again for the group. Uh, she's going to make it her way over to you guys. Over um, here. Yeah. And then she comes with pets. So um, mm. there are several large alligators. When you say several, do you mean three? Three. Because yeah. that's a few. I think it's, it's a few to several, um, depending on your definition. Um, yes, two of them have two heads. So, yeah, exactly. They They're fierce, two-headed <laughs> snakes. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, Granny Morgan, uh, what she looks like uh, is she is covered in um, insects. Um, she is bulbous and wearing not so much. Um, and it is tied together with hemp and rope, uh, but is very very much uh, in danger of revealing parts of herself to you. She has long, uh, long fingers with claws at the end of them and slick, uh, greasy hair that hangs down <coughs> into her face. And um, she steps forward out of the shadows and she says, did you get the hair? I did. I got the hair. Well, great. Let's, let's go back to um, where I stay. And um, we can discuss a mutually beneficial agreement. That sounds fair. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, sounds great. Aaron, sounds why don't you have? Uh, why don't you make a perception? Break? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Uh, perception. Where is it on my new sheet? Cause it changed the way. Oh, there it is. Uh, 24. 24. Okay, so that is a good perception check. So you, as you're making your way through the sewers, um, you notice a carving on the wall, um, mm -hmm. and it matches the carving in the sewers that you saw before. Damn, there's a really bad dwarf tagging problem. <laughs> yes. uh, and this carving depicts the symbol of the Elder Elemental Eye and speaks of a rising of elements, uh, of ele elementals rising up to wipe out all but the faithful. Uh, the scrawl also directs the faithful to attend a meeting uh, by the request of the, um, by, I, this is barely poorly written, mm. um, 
uh, requested uh, requesting a meeting um, to attend by Durkin Firebrand, who uh, is that the uh, house? Not the housekeeper, but the um, that is a different. You're thinking different. of the, you're thinking of a different guy. Yeah. This is the local blacksmith. Huh. Yeah, hmm. Dirk, Dirk and Firebrand is his name. Interesting. Okay. And this is very similar to what you saw before. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so far, we've uh, this was all back in the the other brands that we found. There was one that was in the sewers here, and mm -hmm. there was the one that was on the island. The right? island that you were at. Yeah. In the island of Rorath. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So she leads you along um, a, pa a series of tunnels. If anyone wants to make a survival survival check or oh, you know where's our ranger check, you can certainly do so. I'll make it I got for a him. Twenty. Um, you do not get lost. So oh, good. Oh, I got a twenty-one. If needed, you also don't get. Lost. If don't needed, get lost. you could find your way if back. If only I had four more, I would and get then less lost. She comes to a um, an area that looks like it has just an opening into more sewer tunnels and mm -hmm. she presses her way past it um, and it kind of wobbles um, almost like jello or something like that whoa like she's hmm. pe she pressed her way through gelatin and she motions for you to to join her on the um, other side before we do that it sounds like a slime or something like a gelatin yeah I, so i've been i've been in these sewers before uh -huh. um i don't know if we should walk through Jello. I mean, I don't know. Well, why don't you make a perception check? Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good idea. Ugh. I'll make a perception check. Okay. It's a 26. And Doug, you can make an Arcana check if you like. I don't see that. That would be a 25, Arcana. Okay, so you got a 26. Mm -hmm. It is definitely not a gelatinous cube because she stepped right through it and there she's not encased well, in the I mean, maybe cube. she's got. Maybe um, it's her friend. What yeah, you know is that she stepped through an illusion. Okay. And because she interacted with it and you saw her it step shimmered. through it, it shimmered and okay. um, you would know that this is a kind of a now, hidden entrance. Since he knew a whole bunch about hags, uh -huh. would he know if hags are aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, or fey. undead? We already they're, 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 okay. they're part of the... So I can cast protection from evil that on somebody. One of the things that we were told. Yeah. Well, again, wisdom, not so high. Um, <laughs> but is Doug's wisdom so high, or just Zeno's wisdom? Sorry. No, it's fine. Long, <laughs> long day. I just like to give you uh, crap. That's fair. I so, see wisdom as a dumb stat, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So protection from evil, I could cast it on one person before we go in there if someone wanted to have... Um, What's the cast time? Is it, is it it's one action. Okay, cool. Um, and creature, let's see here, um, creatures of the type that are being protected against uh -huh. have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target, and the target can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. Ooh, that's oh, that pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Mm, that does sound pretty, pretty good. Now, I think you get advantage against enchantments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, Charm. Enchantments. Enchantments? Are you sure? Yeah. Well, do you want enchantment advantage or do you want immunity? Well, immunity would be great. But I mean, we can only do that I'm for one person. For right? Yeah, because it's a concentration yeah. spell. So if you already have advantage on him, uh, I don't think I have any. Thing really and I'm, uh, I get advantage against saving throws on enchantment spells. Mm. So. Okay. so it's probably between you and me. <coughs> right. <coughs> if you want to cast him yourself, I could. You can do that. Or you can cast on me, I'd take it, but I, if you are more worried about it, I don't know who's going to Well, how about this? That's the problem, I don't know. So, you can give him a bonus to saving throws, right? If he gives you immunity, then you can hand out that bonus if you need to. I have inspiration, I can give you inspiration, yeah. that's true. Okay. You want to do that then? Sure. Okay, cool, sweet. Alright, so... Oh, um, I feel all tingly. You're all tingly, so for the next ten minutes, and as long as I'm concentrating... You're immune. And it's specifically for Faye, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I feel like there's a moment where you say fiends and like... <laughs> like, it feels bad. Yeah. So, at this point, uh, go ahead and switch over to the uh, wide shot and I'm going to move the camera. All right. Okay. We're good. Okay. Um, so, you guys walk through the, um, through the entrance? 
so we're where are we? You guys will eventually make your way into the thing. So, so where, is, where do you want her? She, yeah, she'll go ahead and stand there. Okay. It's nice. the sewers. That's lovely. Right? Isn't that great? Oh, uh, I don't know that I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with something else. Well, you don't want the random farts all the time? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm fine with the farts. Um, all right. So she, so inside, stepping through the, um, the magical membrane that disguises her entrance is, is similar to pushing through, um, through a gelatin type substance. Um, and as you're walking through the hallway to uh, a set of double doors, um, you notice that there are arcing sigils on the walls that are glowing. Okay. Um, and she mutters a word, and they um, flash for a second, and a lot, she allows you to pass through. So okay. can I make a check to hear what the word was? Sure. That said? Yeah. Is that an insight or perception? Perception would be fine. That's a 26 again. Okay. Do you speak giant? I don't. I speak common, elvish, celestial. Okay. Make, make just a wisdom check. Okay. Because you can know the word without knowing the language. Uh, so 18, that's uh, 22. You think you have a pretty good idea of what the word is. Okay. That's Belloc. <laughs> that's not even giant. It's <laughs> the elven word for friend. Yeah. With, with a 16 arcana, would I know what spell these runes um, are associated this with? This seems to be some sort of either alarm or ward that okay. she has put down to allow people to, to come through. Um, it but would, I can't tell the difference between if it's a ward or an alarm? Um, it would probably be a bit of both, to be quite honest. Um, but there's probably something, a negative effect, if you walked through this area without her bringing you in. Okay. Uh, as we go by, if Zago will lean in here and be like, hey, by the way, uh, keep on your feet, uh, magic, magic cap, and that's an inspiration to you. So you have a D6 for now. Is it D6 add. or is it D8? D6. Okay. D8 and I can use that nine, how often? Uh, so it's you can on use it. One roll. You can use it on one roll, it but if you let me know, I can give you another one. Yeah, but got you gotta it. keep me a mover. So okay. um, we'll the, the other thing you notice as you pass through the magical barrier that she's constructed there is the smell of sewer and instantly goes away. Um, and it is is mm. not there is water on the ground because it's damp here, but it's not sewer water. Um, so she leads you through a set of doors. Um, the first thing that you can see is a giant um, dais that you, um, there are a number of smaller creatures in this room. Um, they all appear to be like feral gnomes, um, <laughs> but they have, these red hats on, um, mm. and they appear to be running around, kind of just making general mischief. Um, the next thing you notice is there are a number of tables with uh, books and desks with books that are, there's books everywhere. Um, there is also a um, another, um, you wouldn't know this necessarily, but there is another medium-sized figure in the room um, and she is quite lovely to look upon. She is like basically the, opposite, the complete opposite of Granny Morgan. And um, Granny Morgan introduces her as Cackling Agnes. Um, and she's wearing some slightly out of date, um, but nice clothing. It's a bit shabby, dirty. Um, she has um, um, long curly red hair. Um, and um, she says, it's a pleasure to meet you, my dears. Um, Granny Morgan mentioned that you had an encounter last night in the sewers? Yeah. Yeah, we ran into her while we were chasing some folks who, uh, who took something uh, of his. Fantastic. Um, and why don't you make a perception check? Also, by the way, I did just go look it up. That's actually a D8, not a D6. I told I you. New that is a uh, song of rest levels up at a different. Um, thirteen. So you, the one thing that you notice about um, cackling Agnes is she, the the thing that uh, gives away some of her nature is her eyes 
are older than the rest of her uh, visage. So she's got these drooping uh, eyes that are kind of yellowish bloodshot, um, and the, the pupils around them um, are kind of bloodshot. So you, you notice that. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what you know. Um, so uh, Granny Morgan kind of kicks some of the, um, the gnomes to the side and she says, go, go attend to other things. And they kind of wander uh, back. As you're looking around, you, um, you notice that there's a giant statue um, in one of the corners and it is, appears to be of a, either a demon or some kind of uh, fey creature. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, and um, there are green burning torches in uh, uh, a bunch of areas. There's also an altar in the back where there appears to be uh, someone chained to the wall. Uh, okay. Yeah. So what do you want to do? She says, so do you have, you said you have the hair. Can I see it? Uh, I, I would assume as much once we have made our exchange. Okay. And the deal was the spyglass for the hair? That is correct. I don't believe that is correct. I, I believe what you bargained for was um, the location of the thieves. Well, the, mm. the location, the location of the, the, the spyglass. Spy glass. Yes. That, that would work. Unfortunately, um, sorry, we haven't met. My name is Visago. Um, and I, he takes off the stupid goat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, and he's and like, they're surprised. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's kind of throwing up and like, like and uh, the thing is, um, they did make a deal with you for the hair for the thie mm -hmm. information about the thieves. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they don't have the hair. They don't. I have the hair, and I would like the spy glass for the hair. That is interesting. Um, so, are you going to be? Is this a deception? Or uh, yeah, it's a deception. Okay, so why don't you make a make a check, and I will. I'm going to go ahead and use a point on that, because my dice are terrible tonight. Yeah. I thought the tip was cursed. Probably. It's always a bad spot. Yeah. It was. Now it's extended, apparently. Well, it's extended. Well, Eric was sitting here. Where's yeah. Your, where's your box? He hasn't been bringing it. That's the That's, problem. There wasn't room originally for the box, so I stopped putting it in my to-go kit. Yeah. His go bag. There we go. There That's better. Go. That's better. It only took a point and a point of load and die, but uh, so that would be a twenty-four. A twenty-four. So she says, "Interesting. Yeah, I thought you said you had the hair. Well, no, I said I got it. Okay, he brought me. I have the hair." She says, "Well, I. The problem is, I don't have the spyglass to offer you. I have the knowledge that we originally bargained for." All right. Well, I mean, so and I can I can assure you that they still have the the spyglass, because um, if you take a look at the, the table in the back, I happen to have one of the thieves. Oh, okay. He's so, there. can we talk yeah. to him? Sure. Hey, how's it going to walk over? So, you walk over. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going to yeah, we're, we're sticking together. <laughs> okay. So, they journey with you, um, mm -hmm. and what you see is there is a guy shackled to the table, wearing similar clothing to the guys that you you guys discovered the mm -hmm. night before. Um, his mouth is sh sewn shut by a uh, like a really rough um, that, hemp. That sounds painful. Yeah. Mm. And she says, I assure you, it was quite painful. Um, oh. Excellent. And then in the corner behind um, the, the wall section there, there's another caged... Um, individual. That does, does he look like Ryan Reynolds? Or? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Um, but he does. Um, he he does kind of whimper, but he doesn't really say much. Um, the guy with his mouth sewn shut doesn't say much. The guy with his mouth sewn shut does not say anything. Is um, he alive? He looks at you. Yeah. So he is. Uh, like his eyes are kind of scanning wildly. Um, the other thing that you notice as you move your way back here is there is. And you hadn't noticed this in the shadows ab above the ceiling before, but there is what can only be described at this point as kind of an entity. It's kind of a swirling red and black mass that is kind of along the ceiling. 
Interesting. Yeah. Can I make an insight check about what that might be? Sure. I don't probably know much. What'd you get? An uh, 11. An 11? Um, it is definitely not human. Um, That's good. And it appears to be some, I mean, you know, of, being a cleric, you know of uh, several types of undead that it, this could be, but you don't know for sure what this thing is. Okay. Um, but you, you guys all see it. It's very plain. And it's large? Here. It is a good size, yes. Okay. It is kind of spread out, so it's difficult to tell if it was to be in combat. It would be difficult to tell what size it is. Okay. Mm. Um, while we're sitting there, uh, Visago's going to kind of kind of point to the guy. He's like, that's, that's interesting. And then uh, cast message okay. to the guy and say, if you want to get out of this alive, you can start helping me. You can reply to this message. Uh, okay. Um, and then what he responds with back is, I will do anything to get out of this alive. Um, did not think that was possible before you came. Uh, and so I message back Machio like, where did your friends take the spyglass? Uh, and he says that he would be willing to tell you once you get him out of here. So as you guys are having this conversation, uh, another hag walks out of the, the room, and, uh, or out of her other room. How did she walk out of the room? She, there's, there's a door. door. Oh, there's a door there. Yeah, okay. There's a door there. Um, From this angle, I just see walls. <laughs> sure. She missed um, a step. So this is Dread Matilda, um, and she is rail thin, uh, with overly long arms, and, uh, ending in clawed fingertips. Uh, Matilda's face is covered by a curtain-styled mask that is affixed to her head. And it's like um, like theater curtains. So like she could pull it open if she wanted to, but at this point, it, she doesn't appear to need to, to see. And she says, Oh, Agnes, is the, are these the adventures you, you told us about? And, and, uh, and uh, Morgan says, Granny Morgan says, Yes, these are the adventures. Um, and they're here to give us the hair, and we were going to give them the location of the thieves that they were looking for. And, um, and, uh, uh, Mat uh, Matilda says, oh, very good, very good. So, what do you guys want to do now? Um, I will... They keep altering the deal. I, I... As, as they were talking, I'm going to message you through you and tell you that I talked to the guy and repeat basically what I found out so far. Okay. So you have 25 words to do that. So I think you can do it, but just so that... 25 tw words, yeah, per message. Yeah, per message. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted... I think you I think you have no problem communicating yeah. that simple message, but yeah. once we get oh, into... Oh, no, I, I, like, I'm not sending essays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, he wants out, knows where the spyglass is. Right. If yeah. we get him out alive. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Doug, one of the things that Xenos would definitely notice is there's books all over the place. And they mm -hmm. do look like arcane tomes. Okay. Um, there is, there's a book that appears to be wrapped in some kind of skin with a okay. tuft of beard um, on it. Hmm. Um, uh, there is a... Klaatu. There is a book Renata. called <laughs> to, to Serve Children. Okay. Um, <laughs> to Serve Children. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a recipe book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So, um, could I walk over to the the cage a little bit, just sure to see who's over there? Um, yeah, Do you're you definitely going. Like so the at least two of the hags are going to approach. Um, We're just getting, not not necessarily too close. Just you know, that's fine. Make an who's over there? Yeah. For history. Yeah. Will that be history or history or arcana for Aaron? Um, and you? Um, message him and. Why, why are you <laughs> caged? Um, he says that he was caught in the sewers and he has been brought here, I think, to be eaten. I have no idea. I don't, I don't know what their plan. Do you know where my spyglass is? Uh, who are you? <laughs> Does he not look like one of the thieves? No, not at all. Does he look like There's he could cause thing. trouble if he was uh, unlocked uh, out of the cage? Here? He definitely. He's able-bodied. Um, okay. You don't know how long he's been in this cage, but okay. he is able-bodied. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
This is a very interesting place you ladies have here. Why, thank you. <clears throat> very interesting you know, uh, collection of uh, books and oh, knickknacks. you like our books. Oh, you know. Always. You know, we would be willing to part with them if the price was right. Yes, hmm. You should make them a deal. Uh, well, one, one, happily. One, one deal at a time, my friend. One deal at a time. First deal is the location of my spyglass for uh, a hair, I believe. Mm-hmm. The hair of a pirate lord is what we went. We yes. Went for. Yeah. for in exchange for the location of my spyglass. Uh, sure. Yes. We agree to that. Hmm. I'm just. I'm gonna be honest, guys. You told me that uh, I wouldn't have to do any more footwork. I mean, you brought me in as this third party here. I don't see. Um. What are you? Would it be are insight you to, to get a sense of how how difficult it would be to. Um, Fight our way out of here. <laughs> you can make an insight check, yeah. All right. Well, that's that's not gonna be good. Okay. Um, that's a five. I mean, oh, you she's think it's, like way you think it's, thin. You think it's we super could, easy? Like the they're old ladies. We could punch Gosh. through her so easy because she's like. I mean, the youngest so of them. I message these two. Looks. Yeah. We can take them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe, maybe with some help, I'll message back and. Uh, Did you want to make an Arcana check on this uh, creature? Yeah. 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 So that would be a 12, Arcana. Should I use uh, my D8 on that? Sure. That I can give like, you another That one. seems important. Yeah. Okay, oh, so that's a 20. That's oh, you got a 20. Okay, so you <laughs> think that that is a, <laughs> yeah, I did. a form of an elemental Oh. Kind of called a chronomental. Uh, chronomental. Oh, like a time elemental? Yeah. And these are the sisters totally of Totally got this. Time oh, elemental, huh? Right. Can I... Hmm. I think you should just ask about it. Ladies, What's can you thing? can you tell me about the chronomel you have there? Oh yes, we uh, trapped that and bound it to our will. Um, it is now our pet. Um, really? And we use it to um, assist with certain rituals involving time. Hmm. Fascinating. Yes. Can you give me an example of a ritual that involves time that you would um, use it for? Well, if certain things were to go wrong, we might be able to rewind time and make it right. Huh. That's very Galaxy interesting. Quest style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, with the message you just in your ear, you just hear Vazad going, you're so, you're so magical. <laughs> That's another D8 inspiration. Uh, no. <laughs> it is so magical. And with my 20, um, Arcana, do I know anything about it other than what they oh, yeah. told so, me? Oh, yeah. So this creature, it's got, um, it is got the following immunities. It's immune to uh, poison. Um, it's immune to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. Um, it is immune to being exhausted, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, and unconscious. That's just element, typical elemental stuff. Um, and then it, it does have abilities to control... Time, maybe. I mean, in a in a combat aspect, it would not be rewinding everything like a Galaxy Quest style, but it does have the ability to do different things involving uh, screwing with the battlefield as far as time goes. Okay. Hmm. Um, hmm. While they're having this conversation, I'd mm -hmm. like to. Um, I'm going to make a sleight of hand check to cast Mage Hand behind my back. Okay. Do it. Nice. Wow. I mean, you're yeah. just getting killed over there. Yeah, oh. man. This is just real great. The God of Luck is having an off day. Off day. Yeah, you can go ahead and take that. Right. There you are. Spending his inspiration. I mean, you made it past the first couple of rolls. Woo! Oof. Oh, yeah. that's a four. So is this what happens to Mike all the time? This <laughs> 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 sucks. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean yeah. he, well, he's he a barbarian. So we, yeah. He had a pretty good uh, night at the Fairwind Tavern. So that's <laughs> eight. An eight, yeah. um, they definitely see you casting yeah. a spell, um, but you cast a spell. Yeah. Do I, do I notice that they see that I? Oh yeah. So, yeah. so as soon as they see me, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the mage hand and I'll like, poke Xenos' shoulder over here, yeah. and then go. 
<laughs> so they they huh? Huh? they appear to be aware of what's going on in yeah. this scenario, yeah. and they don't appear to be bothered by it at this point. Okay. Um, they 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 seem to think it's a little bit funny, and they yeah. say, "Okay, so let's get down to business. We will give you the location of the spyglass, and you will give us the hair of a pirate lord." Okay. I give them the hair. Okay. Hmm. What? What? Mm. So one of the. Mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Whoops. You st Sorry, I forgot it. that you had it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you, you stop stealing things. So a hag comes over to you. Uh -huh. and so which one's coming over? Um, just the closest one. It's fine. Well, this one, this one, or that one? Which the, the one? Then skinny uh, one. Then skinny yeah. one? Well, okay. she was supposed to come over with yeah. us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I, so. I just she holds I, her hand out. I don't feel hair. comfortable because I don't know how you're going to get the location of the spyglass. This guy's mouth is already sewn shut. We know the information that you seek. You know the information we seek? You already know where their hideout is? Yeah. No, where the spyglass is. We know where the spyglass is and we know where their hideout is. So really? If you'd like to make deals Is with that the both. same place? If you'd like to make deals for both, <laughs> you're certainly We just want to know where the spyglass is, apparently. We That's are, the most important thing, really. We are adept at um, divination magic, so we can we can even tell you where the spyglass oh, is going Granny to. Oh, Granny Morgan! I know mm. that you just bat your eyelashes at some wandering by guy, and he you just know, tells you everything that you want to hear. You know, you sweet talk me, and we can go into that other room, and we can act on your sweet talk. <laughs> 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 So, so, the, loca so the, the location of my spyglass for a date with him. No, no. What? Oh. <laughs> my charisma's not that high. Um, so do you hand it over? I just, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't seem like a good enough deal for me. And I, I put the hair away. I just, well, what? Uh, I'd like the spyglass. I don't, I don't feel like I really want to do any running around work. It's just, uh, we can tell you more about the spyglass. What, you can tell me more about the spyglass? We what, that it's that. some thing that it, you know, no, oh, it can, and I'll repeat what the, the cleric said. Like, I mean, I know a lot about the spyglass. I doubt you know anything more. Do you know it. who else is looking for the spyglass? The red mages? I know about the, the red, red wizards. Mages. But the, the red wizards are only brokers. They are not the individuals that are looking for I gold. bet I know. I mean, who? I bet it's the cult of the dragon. Archon? It is not our. Maybe it's the cult of the I've said elemental eye. I've said too much. <laughs> I've given you enough for free. Is it Lord Rundice? <laughs> <laughs> we just start naming every major player. <laughs> is it the Xanathar? <laughs> How do you know about the Xanathar, they say? I don't know. I just, I feel like. That's, a, that's on the other side of the world. <laughs> I feel like I, I, it's, it's it's Grandpa High Hill. He figured out I where think, it was. I think it? we're just gonna call my ride out of here and get out, and I'll take out the horn of the merfolk. I'll be like, I really just I, I don't think you guys have anything I'm interested in, and I'll I'll put it up and see if if they show they interest. They do show interest in the horn of the merfolk. Oh, do you know about the horn of the merfolk? Um, I I believe Volgrim had it at one point, and then it was stolen from him. Yeah, it's funny how people lose things like that all the time. So, what are you offering? What I'm offering is I would really like my that spyglass. Okay. And you're willing to give up what? I mean, this thing, I have no really use for it. It does call 1d4 sharks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I know, and it's... It's a rather fond trick I have, but I mean, if you had the spyglass here, I would offer it. Why don't you make a perception? Yeah. If I'm oh training, my oh wait. Gosh. Are you serious? Here, <laughs> Doug, will you get me the dice back? I'll use my inspiration to give you another. What if I now. just cast no, this, aid? <laughs> this this die is going into the shame pile. <laughs> Yeah, no. That was a two, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it was a two. <laughs> and a series of ones and fours. Yeah, it has not rolled very high all let's, night. Let's, uh, let, let, let's, let's, the gods. I, I mean, it has been consistent. Yeah. That much is true. Well, I mean, there was times where you got natural 20s and some high, it, high numbers, but 
It took three right. rolls to get there. We're gonna try. We're gonna try this instead. I think that's Mike's first D20. So yeah. Good luck we'll, with that. Yeah, we'll see if this. Mm. No. Oh my god. Okay, so that is only as a uh, seventeen. Okay, so that is still really good. Yeah. Um, like they that. are willing to. They will. They are willing to trade uh, a boon. Um, and the knowledge of the spyglass mm. for the horn and the hair. And they tell you what the boon yeah. is, is they can give you one of the following. So they can give you, divination wizards have what's called a portent, which is okay. at the start of the day you roll a d20. Okay. And you can choose to replace a, a roll with the portent. Basically, you're seeing mm -hmm. the future. So if you roll low, you could replace a, a attack, attack with an enemy's attack yeah. with that. Um, if you roll high, you could just replace whatever you want to do with it. With that high roll. Oh, that's bad. That is bad. Um, they can um, they can give you um, a blessing of the fate, which is uh, effectively one use of luck. Mm-hmm. Um, and this would stay with you for a period of time. Um, and then they have what's called Twisted Fate, which is um, they can redirect um, a spell or an attack to a, 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 the closest ally. Mm -hmm. so. uh, how, how long would this boon? It would last um, 30 days. 30 days. Hmm. I think that the best deal was the hair for the location of the spyglass. Yeah, uh, you, you're not driving me hard enough on the horn of the merfolk. No. Okay. I'll put that away. Okay, so do you hand over the hair? <sighs> and we give them the, the horn for the location of the spyglass, but... I mean, we could do that, but... I just they don't, don't think it's an even trade. They don't think it's an even trade. That's yeah. And you guys haven't persuaded them to take that. I mean, I just, I, I don't see how you guys can make deals like this when you're not taking care of your prisoners. Uh, we take very good care of our prisoners. He's still alive for now. Uh, I cast heat metal on the chain. <laughs> he starts writhing. Um, and they, they chuckle. And um, so, uh, Cackling Agnes, she, when she chuckles, mm -hmm. it is like the worst, um, like chalkboard fingernails. Yeah, chalkboard fingernails. Um, it is another tell that she is um, she is very much a hag. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, they start they start laughing. They're not really too concerned about it. What do you want for him? Hmm. What are you offering? I asked you what you wanted for him. Well, he certainly has the location of the spyglass in the thieves' hideout. Oh, he does. So, if we gave you him, it would at least have to be the hair. Um, and if you want to sweeten the deal. So, the location of the spyglass and him for the hair. <laughs> no, no, because... They will. They'd be willing to give you the, the location of the spyglass for the hair. If but you want him as well, you're gonna have to throw in. He'll something. be willing to give us the location of the spyglass. And the they know line. it. Mm -hmm. And they know that yeah. he, he he has it. it. So yeah. they're they're not going to offer him up for cheaper than the, the what the, the location alone. Well, I didn't know if the spyglass had moved since last he knew where it was, and they've got divination magic. So they do have divination magic. They may have more. They can tell you Updated where the spyglass will be. But that is not what you're asking for. So. Why don't we free him and kill the hags? I kind of like that plan. I do like that plan. I do want to try one more thing before we do that. Um, How is he restrained, by the way? He's got He's chains, got chains that are currently heated. <laughs> <laughs> ah! they're, I, they're not sparking. Like, with, I can choose to spark them. With a casting of knock, release him? Uh, or, yeah. Do you have knock, or are you just going to use that rod of yours and hope for it? No, I have knock. <laughs> Ooh, but what if we just use the rod? And so oh. what, if, what if we just rolled the dice of fate? Um, <laughs> uh, I won't roll it, but someone else should. Um, uh, and I'll go, well, 
Ladies, the problem is we're at. I'm a gambler by trade. Okay. Um, and we're. The problem is. I thought you were a pirate. You're terrible. No, I'm a pirate. You're, He's the gambler. You guys don't seem to be very good gamblers because I can tell no, that what you want is this hair really <laughs> bad. Yeah. And I don't care that much about the spyglass. And I'll start walking towards the door. Okay. See, they, they let you pass. They let you pass? Yeah. How far are you going? I'm, I'm going to go to the door and see if they stop me at all. Um, they're interested in the hair, but they're... So, make an insight check. Sure. I'll just tell you what they have if you, if you get a decent roll. Uh, that is a 10. Okay. So, you get the... You get the feeling mm -hmm. um, that they're interested in the hair, but they're not. This is a long con game, yeah. so if they don't, if you guys don't provide it for they're them, they're not on a time limit. They're yeah, yeah. they're they they we'll will someone else. try to to get it some other way. Um, okay. So yeah. in their minds, they have the knowledge that you want, and you're either going to deal with them or not. Okay. All right. Um, what are they going to do about the fire? The heat metal? No. The book's over here on fire. <laughs> oh, you started a fire? I'm strongly considering it. Well, I mean, I don't think they're going to do anything about you considering it. No, but if I start a fire, are you guys going to back me up or are you going to run out the door? I, run out the door. How, how, you good, how good are you with that, uh, that flame bolt? The flame bolt? Yeah. Should like, be okay. Could you, could you like, hit a hair in someone's hand? I hit that drink in the bar. It's true. That's what I was considering. And so it's going to be a harder shot. I will tell you that. I'll say, okay. I've got that D8. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> I was like, okay. I will give you the hair if you give us the location of the spyglass. Ladies, you have called my got, bluff. Okay. Oh, we got to get him. So she walks no. over. Yeah. Okay. And we I'm going to position myself so I'm next to Xenos over here. I'm going to be like, okay. in front of everyone here, including my captain, who's basically my lawyer. Okay. I will hand you this hair. So she takes the hair. And she starts, is she going to tell us the location? Because I, um, I don't let go until she tells me the location. She I, I hand her so that way she has it. And I go, and the location? Um she will impart the knowledge to you. So all of a sudden you just get like almost seeing through the thief who's chained to the mm -hmm. that's, that's um, the thief who's chained to the table's eyes, you see this passageway through this uh, through these sewers. Um, and then you see these secret markings that they've made so that they can kind of keep mm. the, the way. And you now know the way to the... Okay. So do you give me a signal? And I'll go, okay. And I let And then go I got a 27 on my to flame bolt to light it on fire. Okay. So what we don't know that's is a that we just said 11 fire, fire damage. Fire. So the interesting thing about your 27 is she's going to use portent instead, and now you got a 10 plus your um, attack modifier, which is what? Well, eight. plus the D8. Plus I could roll the D8 yep. then. Yeah. So it would be an 18 mm -hmm. plus 6, so it's 24. Yeah. Oh, it's so so you hit the hair. What was the DC on that? Uh, it was going to be a 20. Okay. okay. Um, so I had to roll the eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you hit uh, the hair, and she immediately screams, No! What have you done? Oh, um, you said nothing about keeping the hair. You just said that the deal was that I had to hand you the hair. And then she turns to Doug, and you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, is she casting a spell on me? She is casting a spell. Okay, hold on then. It is a third level spell. Okay, hold on. This is important. How high is it? the ceilings in this chamber. Okay, so... Probably, I mean, you can see the statue, so that's probably an appropriate amount of height. So it's a little bit higher than okay. that. Okay, so I counterspell it. So about 15, 20. Okay. Um, so I, I, um, I've got my, my rod of the practiced hand, and as she casts a spell, I move the wand in the opposite direction and untangle the magical auras and energies. Okay. And um, if it's a spell of third level or lower, it's it's, it fails and has no effect. You're correct. So now I think we need to roll initiative. That's fair. Yeah. What? For what? I'm not fighting. I'm just standing here complimenting Granny. Okay. Oh, good. I rolled a seven plus my initiative bonus. Seven. 
Uh, so that's a seven. Eleven. Eleven. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Doug? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So it's going to go Xenos, um, and then Visago, and then Sarsaril, and um, between them is the Hags, and uh, I also got to roll for the gnomes. I can't use my best. Stuff. These are the gnomes are called. Why not? Um, because we're in a small, we're in a room. We oh, oh Thunderwave. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I can't use Thunderwave. I just can't use Call Lightning. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, the the gnomes are called red caps. I knew that already. I figured you would know. That. Okay. So Xenos, mm -hmm. um, she attempts to cast bestow curse on you. Okay. And you counterspell it. Yep. So that is Granny Morgan. Okay. It is now your turn. Okay. What would you like to do? Um, I think. Hmm. Either cause fear or, or um, burn Granny Morgan. Uh, I think I'll hit her with fire. I mean, I I wasn't gonna guess that that's what you're gonna do, but it seems like that's what you're gonna do. It seems it seems like the it's the, kind of on brand. It's definitely yeah. it's definitely in your wheelhouse. Yeah, so that would be a fourteen to hit it to hit Granny Morgan. Uh, that does not hit. Granny okay, Morgan. so and then I will move back over here a bit. Okay. So that I'm not as All right. clearly visible to everybody. All right. So the elemental moves across the ceiling. Um, and it's going to move 30 feet. 30 feet. Which way? Uh, towards you. Oh. All right, so. And five, it's going 10, to. 15, 20, 25. There we go. So it goes about right there. Yeah. And it sees me. It sees you. And I see it. And then it's going to have you make a wisdom saving throw. Is it a spell? Or? This is an ability check. This is called steal time. I don't want to steal my time. Did you, what did you get? I got a 20 on my wisdom. Okay. So you successfully fight it off. Okay. Um, it does not gain a bonus to its initiative roll and you do not have a bunch of negatives to you. Excellent. Good. So it moves, but it moves to hovering above you. Okay. Um, it's a dark cloud over me. So we got the gnomes are where they are in the map, yeah, right? Yeah, gnomes are where they are. Yeah. And what are they wielding? Um, like the craziest collection of uh, farming utensils you've ever seen. So like uh, so sickles and pitchforks and like. One has got a mallet, um, so just a random assortment of uh, weird tools. Yeah, okay. So I can grab this cluster of three and 90 feet. Did I count that right? Mm. Probably, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm gonna cast sleep. On okay. This cluster at three. All oh, right. So let me roll my d8s here. Three. Three. Yeah, I think he's going. He's getting the other one, but same. The one in the middle. I just want to make sure I rolled the right amount of d8s here real quick. Sorry, it's been a while since I've used sleep. Yes, I did. No problem. Uh, so that is 21 point hit points worth fall asleep. Okay. One falls down. Okay. So which one? Uh, Aaron, which one do you want? Uh, I would rather have this one. Okay. She falls asleep. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and move... Um, all right, so it is their, the Red Caps' turns. So they 
except for this one that's asleep, they come charging towards you guys. So the one that is on the center is going to just run down. They can move. How have you not greased this already? 25 feet. That is kind of his opening move. Um, <laughs> I wasn't close to anyone. I thought I could be effective greasing. Um, is he adjacent? I can't see. No, no, he's one square away. Okay, so he's going to move adjacent. He's going to just dash. And, okay. Um, and they're basically going to dash. So if you can move them 50 feet forward okay. so that they're trying to get close to either the, any of the three of you, however that works out. Um, and then it's Sarsarel's turn once they get... Okay, so they're not going to have a turn. No, they have to okay. spend their action to so, dash. <laughs> 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 I was gonna cast something other than Thunder Wave on the No, I think turn, you need to open with Thunder right Wave. They're real close. They're getting, yeah, they're pretty close. I feel like he'd be right there. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Which square is that other one in, though? I'm gonna be in this square, I guess. Because I need 40, to have a square. 50? Is this one in that square, or that square, or that square, or that oh, square? Oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's in this. Right. It's in this square, because that was the one that moved. Oh, okay, so okay. It's, it's right there. Yeah. Okay. So, Sarsarel, what are you doing? I guess I'll do a Maximize Thunder Wave right here. Okay. And you're going to hit uh, Granny Morgan and two. Yeah, and that's a BC And two or 17. three? Is it yeah. two or three? Two. 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 Okay. Just two. Yeah, I can't oh. hit that one and those two. Uh, okay. 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 So So they need to make constitution saving throws? Is that right? Uh, is that constitution? Sorry, Get, would you be able no, to fine. select between this one or this one when you're doing your Thunder Wave, Howard? Huh? Would you, can you select between either two of them, or can you only get that one? I can only do it in a three by three. Yes. Oh, oh. okay. Because I was saying, if you can grab this one, it might be a better idea, because I was going to try and crown a Magus oh, this so one next turn. Mm, I mean, that would still, if she's occupying the, those sure. squares. Okay. That's fine. Then, sure. Uh, I, hold on. I thought I had it on there still. Problem is, I was looking up something else. That's fine. Ba, 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 ba. It is a Constitution saving throw. Okay. So roll your damage because they take it. Uh, I'm not gonna roll it. It's max damage. Okay. So it is. Um. Sixteen damage. Okay. Um, and so then the smaller creatures, or actually everybody is pushed 10 feet away from me that fails to save. Okay. How far? 10 feet. Okay. So the the two red caps that you hit are pushed away. Okay. Um, and um, I'm doing some math here. So probably the same direction. Sure. And then um, she takes the 16 damage, and she is also pushed okay. 10 away. Okay. So she'll be. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I can still move, right? You can move. Mm -hmm. so and you can take a bonus action if you like. Uh, you know what? As a bonus action, I'm gonna use a use a heal on the guy that's on the altar, because he looks like he could use um, it. Is, that is the healing word? Is it a cantrip? Because that's all you. Can oh, that's right. I'm yeah. sorry. Never mind. Okay. So what are you gonna do? You guys seem to be blocked in back here. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to... I'll move. Uh, I'm, I'll just do a five-foot step down here. Or I'll just move to this square. Oh, if I'm if I'm moving, do I take attacks of opportunity? Only if you have adjacent creatures threatening you. Okay. Which you so don't. I didn't which, at the start of my didn't, turn, but so. I can move through well. So yeah. when you move in and out of someone's reach, that's when you... We, when you move out of somebody's reach, that's when they can attack you. So, so if I move into and stay adjacent, yeah, that's okay? Yeah, that's fine. So I'll move yep. to there. Okay. Um, I didn't want to move past All right, there. so it is the hag's turns. And at the end of your turn, Howard... Um, no, that's not Okay. So the hags... Um, one of them goes invisible. Um, and actually, Doug, could you, so there is, on the top of the, um, the bookcase there, there is one of those cases that has an invisible mini on it, uh, in it. 
You mean this one? Yeah. Um, so go Which ahead one? and replace the Medusa that's there. Uh, mm -hmm. So she goes invisible. Okay. Um, the other one is going to um, have... She's gonna move forward past the... Yeah, she's gonna move forward past that so that she can see Xenos. And oh. she's going to... To see me, so she's gonna get to there? Yeah. Okay. So she's going to make you make a wisdom saving throw. Is this a spell? This is a spell. Is it level three or below? You don't, well, so you can use your reaction to identify the spell, or you can reuse your reaction to counterspell the spell. Okay. Um, the reaction, um, you attempt to interrupt the creature by processing it as third or level lower, its spell fails. Mm -hmm. Fourth level or higher, it makes an ability check using my uh, so spellcasting DC. Are you going to 10 plus the um, How many times spell's can you level. Spell? I can only do it twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got as many as his third level spot. Slot. Yeah. It's, it is my third level spell. Yeah, um, oh, which is a great third level spell. Mm -hmm. It's not highly damaging, but it is great. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's abjuration. If I'm an abjuration wizard, this seemed like the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, anyway, I can... So... I mean, I hope that she doesn't... You have to make a... If, if it's higher than uh, third level, I believe you if have to If it is make casting a spell... I'm the D, uh, Yes, I make yeah. the... D, so I you're going to have to make a... You didn't. You didn't give me another D8, did you? Uh, I haven't been able to yet. Okay, so next turn I put. Yeah. On it. Go for it. I'm so gonna counter spell. You have to make a. It's a level. Spell. It's a fourth level spell. Ah. It's a fourth level spell. Okay. So I've got to roll an eleven. That's a one. Oh. Okay. Oh wait. Halfling lucky. Oh yeah. Oh, we roll a one. one. There nice. you go. That was clutch. All right, so I got a nine, so that's 12 total. So okay, so you didn't, didn't, I didn't make it. I didn't, didn't make it. So you transform into a little lizard. It is polymorph. Is, oh, is this a, is it not a curse, though? Polymorph is it not a curse. It is not a curse. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I thought you said I'd make a will save. A wisdom saving throw. Yeah, so I get to make the saving throw. Yeah. Just because I failed, failed the counter spell. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay. Okay. So my, that's a 17 on my save. See here, what is there? Actually, that beats their save. So you no, are not you are lizard. not turned into a um, a tiny lizard. You okay. you for a second you feel your shape change, mm -hmm. and fight it off. Yeah. Interesting. Um. So the other I'm a more powerful wizard, right? Granny this, Morgan clearly is going to. I'm not worried at all about us getting <laughs> all polymorphed into tiny things. Yeah. And yeah. I mean. Why? Why would Polymorph's you? Polymorph's an enchantment, though. Well, he's immune from that kind of stuff. Yeah, I get advantage at least. So, um, Howard, does a does a eighteen hit your? It does AC? not. It does not. Okay. So she strikes out with something very similar to what uh, Emperor Palpatine would use. Okay. Um, it is called Witch Bolt, but it is lightning that bursts forth from Granny Morgan's fingers and dances across your um, your armor, but the protection of Umberly. Right. The sea bitch. Right. <laughs> protects I mean, you. Mm -hmm. I um, would expect her to use that. Yeah. So, Xenos, it is your turn. I laugh. Are you gonna? Are, are either of you gonna heal the guy that's chained up? Well, yeah. I don't know why. We, I mean, I know where it is. Yeah, I know. The only reason it was, if you did, and I, I cast knock, then he's free to help us. Oh I sure. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. But, that's all um, I was thinking. But I haven't healed him, and I have more. You have more. Than, yeah. Okay. I, I don't think we would. Either of us would spend. Yeah. Him. Let's spend combat saving this guy. I was thinking he more. Did steal from you guys. I, I, was I mean, that's how more you make a, friends in this group. I was if, more of a. If we were gonna yeah. free someone, I was thinking this guy might be a better. If we can, you could cast knock on this. I could, I could, yeah. Kill or the I hags. could, or I could fight the hags. Well, or that, you could leave. Or you could leave. You have the information. It's true. But so we all have to be able to leave. See you later. Um, all three, four of us. Yeah. Because our ranger's here, right? No. Not doing anything. Oh, he's, he didn't come. No. He stayed out here with the alligators. He didn't come with you down into the sewers. You rolled the survival check for him. Oh, that's true. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't come in. He rolled it just to tell us how to get where we're um, going. Hey guys, you just take yeah. three lefts and a right. And yep. you're like, that's not the way at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out. <laughs> Even I know. <laughs> how do I think the hags would react if I did set some of their spellbooks on fire? 
How would you react if you yeah, said that? Oh, I, I would rush over there to... Spells on... What? Yep. No. I'll sit on fire. Okay. So, flame bolt okay. to there. Maybe and... So that would be a 16. I immediately okay. cast Sleet Storm. Because I want to put that fire out. No! <laughs> so, you, so that's 12 damage. You light a book on fire, and directly sitting next to the book, you see, and you hadn't noticed this before because um, it was just a jar, but there is an eyeball fo floating in the jar that immediately starts moving around <laughs> the, um, the jar, trying to, like, looking at the fire, and it seems quite concerned about this. Um, and... Uh, that's that eyeball's diary. The hag. It's um, on fire. Um, really? It's no. the closest I had to. Can uh, we just imagine? Yeah, we can. No, imagine. we can't imagine anything. I do have fire. I, but I didn't realize oh, it. That that you didn't realize I was going to cast fire. I didn't you realize that you were going that. to start attacking objects. Just fire wizard. It should, just, it should just be permanently attached to as many at this point. Uh, <laughs> I've been called an. I've been called a fire wizard. Okay. So that was your action. That was my action. That was a cantrip? That was. So I'm, not, I'm not misty stepping anymore. Are you doing anything else with your... Um, you don't want to misty step over next to me? That seems kind of a waste of a misty step. Okay, and then you can teleport cool. out. And then we'll all teleport away because I'm a druid now. <laughs> Wait, you can teleport? Oh, wow, that's great. When did you say <laughs> yeah, welcome that's to a, the druid club? That's new. What is um, a <laughs> That's all you can say before you die. <laughs> yeah. All right. Whoa, shit. So, Shad, yeah. I'll, I will step back a little bit, and okay. I got a 27, natural 27 on my stealth side. Okay, so from Why everybody that crazy. doesn't have line of sight to you, you are definitely hidden. However, the chronomental has direct line of sight to you. So you can't hide from that. Oh. Mm -hmm. pick, pick the one corner where there wasn't anything in this room. Oh, there's a cage. I'm not hiding in the cage. <laughs> hide in the cage. Well, maybe well, I, I mean, slip I, in. I, I don't know. Mad um, okay. He's the greatest one. So the chronomental goes, and... I message mask him if you've been The chronomental goes, and it... you're a halfling wizard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It sweeps, I'll turn him into stone. It sweeps down so that it is now... Um, is it no longer on the ceiling? Yeah, it's no longer on the ceiling. So, it's, it, so we will use this... We'll move this axe and shield, shield combat, combat riser. riser. And Aaron, how's the how's the shot? Do we? It seems like we're more towards the back. Are we? Uh, we're more up? towards the middle. I can move it. So we're, oh, yeah. hold on. Before I do this, okay. Let me not make people sick. That's a good plan. So it sweeps down. And oh, I have to roll for this because it's a chronomental, so it has one d four slam attacks per round. Oh, look at that five. Um, How is that one d four? One d four plus one. Oh. Um, okay, so Doug, you're gonna get attacked. Okay. What's your AC? My AC is 17. Okay. That's pretty uh, good. So one hits out of those two. A natural 20 is gonna hit, and then the last one. Okay, so you get hit twice. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. For 37 damage. I'm dead. <laughs> the first one is not the crit, so that okay. is 10 damage. Okay. And the second one is the crit. Ooh. He's rolling multiple dice. Yeah. And that is 15 damage. Don't you wish you were over here, next to the cleric? Now you do. Yeah, now I do. Now the cleric. Now I might be misty you. stepping. Um, so that's it for that. Zago, it's your turn. Okay. So um, I am something. gonna go ahead and. I assume you misty step. I'm gonna cast uh, <laughs> this. No, this you didn't one, see the burst of mist. A wisdom saving throw. Okay. DC 16. DC 16. And I don't think that makes it. Okay. Um, let me see, just to make sure. Nope, it does not make a it. A crown of madness descends upon his head, a jagged iron crown. Uh-huh. Um, and then I'm going to, as a bonus action, I'm going to give you another D8 inspiration. Okay. And I feel you... like we should really focus on the hags, because my hope is if we kill the hags, the chronomental will no longer be bound by their magic. Mm -hmm. That seems reasonable. I know, this is for him to attack the hag. The, the challenge that Doug is going, or Xenos is going to have is now Surviving he's boxed the... into a corner with only a chronomental. A misty step. step. Misty That's true. Step. If only. Um, okay, and so is that at the end of Zago's turn? Mm -hmm. Okay, the end so of it potion. is yes. the, the red cap's turn. Uh -huh. so, so the red cap is going to, going to attack, attack the hag. The hag. Yep. Um, all right, so he's going to make an attack. Um, he's going to make three attacks, actually. 
Yeah, he is. Um, so far, I'm two for two on okay. crowd of madnessing people with three multiple attacks. Okay. He hits twice. Um, so she takes uh, eight and seven damage, so 15 damage. Um, and she's perturbed by yeah. that. Um, because her own minion is attacking, is attacking her. her. Yeah. yeah. Um, she didn't like that. And then he gets another wisdom saving throw at the end of this turn. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Um, nope. Okay. Does not. Okay. So the other ones are going to move forward and they're going to attempt to attack either you or Howard. So Do you want me just move? to split one and one? Yeah. Okay. There's three there, though, right? There's two. There's, there's one. one. There's one over there. Too. Oh, I can't even. Yeah, see Yeah, you can't one. see him. So they're gonna sweep forward and start attacking. Um, um, who gets the two attacks and who gets the one? I'm trying to think if there's a way the other one can squeeze in there because his buddy's right there. Oh yeah. Yeah, no. I don't think, think there's enough can. room for them. So just one and one. One and one. All right. So Howard, you're getting attacked. Um, that is two twenties. Well, I mean twenty hits. Okay, and the so other one misses. Me? Yeah, so you get, you get hit twice. Wait, I thought it was just one and one. Yeah, yeah they but have they three attack attacks. three times. Oh, okay. So on the first hit, uh, I'm going to do a Wrath of the Storm. Okay. So he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, how about a five? That is not going to be sufficient. So oh, when he hits me. He has plus one. Six. Perfect. So when he hits me, a bolt of lightning unleashes from my hand back at him and hits him for nine damage. Okay, he gets hurt by that quite a bit. Is that one of the ones that I already hit with the new Yes, okay. you did. He is fairly injured. <laughs> so, um, Aaron, there's one that definitely hit you. How one, much damage did he do to me? I haven't rolled the damage. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, two hits. Okay. So, so when those he, weren't crits, those were just hits? When oh, okay. he hits me the first time, um, <laughs> He can go ahead and he can, because he can attack the two characters with damage reaction. Uh, he can go ahead. A dexterity saving throw as well. Okay, nice. That is a 19. A 19, so he only takes half of this. Okay. So instead of taking oh, man, 18 that's damage, Jeez, that's uh, than like he's going to take nine, nine okay. fire damage. As he's engulfed in hellish he, flame. So one, Yours makes the same. Yours takes the same damage as mine did. So I mean, one is same. Yeah, well, it's two d ten. It's one in, gets hit by amazing. lightning, the other one gets engulfed in flame. Oh, yeah, yeah, from attacking us. So I'm so, hoping we're setting a pattern. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, Aaron, yours is um, ten damage. Ten damage. Two attacks. Okay. Cool. And oh, minimum damage on both. Yours is also ten damage. Okay. Total. Um, yeah. Total. So that is the red caps uh, start from. Okay, so I'm going to use a bonus action to speak to my trident that bursts into an electrical charge mm -hmm. that casts a brilliant light 40 yeah. feet around me. The hags kind of shy away from the light as you, uh, the, the brilliant light that erupts. And I brandish it menacingly as my movement Sure. Just because, and then I actually cast uh, Guardian Spirits. Okay. Because that will allow me to tear uh, people Unfortunately, apart. I can't see you, so I cannot, I cannot uh, call you out as being unaffected by the spell. But I will make sure that this guy and my good friend, the trustworthy Tiefling Bard, are uh, unaffected by it. Okay. Sweet. And the creatures within 15 feet of me. Two, three, four, four of the red caps and this hag. hag. Uh, okay. I don't remember her name. Is that Ag is that cackling Agnes? Yeah, I believe okay. so. She's the one that was in this room. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I so. think that was Matilda. Oh, no, okay. Matilda. Okay. So yeah. Matilda needs to make a save. Okay. Uh, it is a wisdom saving wisdom throw. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. As as uh, basically like fey spirits surround me mm -hmm. and whirl through. In like a funnel formation there. Yeah. So okay. Um, so what's the DC? Seventeen. Okay. So she makes it. Okay. Um, the other two, I don't even have to roll because they're gonna get killed. Even if on the half yeah, damage. Okay. So she'll take. 
Uh, so she takes five. Okay. That's halved because okay. it was ten, and yeah. that is uh, radiant damage. And they, the others, just get disintegrated by this radiant damage. Um, so I have a question for Aaron. all. Mm-hmm. All four of them? Or uh, there's the two that were. There was the two that got that were adjacent to you that were attacking you. Those two mm-hmm. Those definitely two got definitely. incinerated. Aaron, um, if if crown of if a creature targeted by crown of madness takes damage, does it get to make another save? Um, I believe so. So they took ten damage then. Okay. The ones that didn't save. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So the one that was adjacent to Agnes or Matilda is does not make his da- his saving throw, so he takes the ten. Okay. Oh, um, I'm sorry. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, then never mind. It didn't matter anyway because yeah. uh, he didn't make it. All right. So that is Sarshal's turn. Do you mm-hmm. want to move or anything else? Uh, no, because well, no. This one's charmed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'll take a yeah. step. Okay. Back. Um. All right. So the invisible hag goes over to the table, and she puts out the um, fire. Um, nobody sees her do it. No, we just see the fire go out. I I don't know if I do. No, you may not from that angle, and, and I certainly don't. <laughs> the other, um, so Granny Morgan mm-hmm. is going to go ahead, and actually, you know what? Um, I'm going to rewind time a little bit. Um, so when you attacked uh, Matilda, she's going to redirect that to this guy. Um, so that is going to do damage to him twice. Instead of, two. <laughs> Instead of her okay. taking five damage, okay. the other guy takes t- 20. Wow. Okay. I like it. I like that. The one um, that's attacking her, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It makes exactly. sense. Exactly. No, I, I would see why I you would doubt do that. she cares that much about what and, happens to that. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just like his three attacks, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, she is going to look at Zago, and mm-hmm. she is going to cast a third level spell. Okay. Uh, is it a charm and or uh, is it a charm? It is bestow curse. Bestow curse? I don't know what that clarifies. I don't under. know what bestow curse is either. But yeah. if you'd like to make a saving throw, I well, will go ahead and look it up. Cool. And it's wisdom, right? Yeah, it's wisdom. Mm. It is necromancy. I have it in my spell list. It becomes cursed for the duration of the spell. Uh, you touch a creature. Oh. Oh, yeah. So she'll move forward. And, and Does she have to make an attack roll then? No. 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 Not to touch. And Typically, it's, if it's a saving throw, then it's not an attack. Yeah. So she'll move forward and touch it. Okay. So uh, it's you gonna choose go one ability score. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she's going to say... Um, have you, you haven't pulled out your sword cane yet, right? Mm-hmm. So she's going to say charisma. So okay. you're at, so um, you've got disadvantage, disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Yeah. And you take one d eight necrotic damage. And you take uh, she, you have disadvantage on you have disadvantage on attack rolls against her. Oh yeah. wait, no. Additional one d eight damage. It, when she attacks me, she can deal an additional d eight. Yeah. Yeah. So who who, who did this? First, the she did. Must make a wisdom so she walked us. Start yeah. of each of its turns. Yeah. And if it fails, it wastes mm-hmm. its action that turn doing nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, remove curse spell ends this effect. Um, you know, guy. So, um, let's see here. Uh, Granny Morgan's gonna try to lightning bolt you again. Okay. With mm. which bolt? Is this an attack roll? It is an attack roll. Okay. Uh, that is. Uh, where's her? How is she staying all the way over where she is? Yeah. Or? This she, is a ranged Who thing. had, who touched him then? This so, one. Oh, she walked up. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, that is an 18. So now she's that adjacent to you. Okay. I laugh at her again. She's she's very sad. That that's, that's the case. That this okay. didn't hit. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so that is the three of them. Xenos, it is your turn. So I can't see because of the wall in the way. Correct. Mm-hmm. So from here, is it possible for me to see this square over here? Uh, yeah, I would, it's I diagonally. Would think so, yeah. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. What level is Missy set? It's a level 2 spell. It's counter spell. Who's, who's seeing me cast it? The one that, it, well, she can hear you cast it. So she, the one that's standing there has line of sight. I had you. a 27 on my stealth to hide back there. Yeah, but you, it, 
I it believe she was over there when he component. did it. Yeah. Is it? Does it have verbal components? Misty step. Yep. It is verbal, okay. purely <laughs> verbal. So when you speak the word, she uses her reaction to counterspell, just like you could have done to her and have done. Come on, that's funny. Right. It was either that or when you got to that square, you had to make a saving throw or take damage from the... Counterspell does space. require you to, of course, see, not hear, but see the spell. But, all right, so my kit, my Misty Step is... I mean, Guardian Spirits. Mm -hmm. All right. It seems like a bad choice. It does seem like a bad choice. Well, in that case, I'm going to Firebolt her. Yeah. Okay. Because that I can do. You yeah. can do. Yeah. So that's a 25 to hit her. You hit her. Okay. So that's 10 damage. She's going to use her legendary action to redirect that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Does that guy die? Uh, how much damage? Ten. Ten? Ten fire oh, damage. He's, he's, okay. he's pretty hurt. Um, okay. So um, that was Doug's turn. Uh, the chronomental. I don't go. have any room to... Nah. Do you want to run around him? Can I? Yeah, you as, can run around him. Oh, okay. As you long can't as you leave touch his, his face. Yeah. Yeah. If you're still in contact with... So, five, 15, 20, 25. I can no, look there. Can and now I can... Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. more. Now you can yeah. see the floating spirits around me. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I don't want to get near? So he's going to try to attack you twice, because he only rolled one on his 1d4 okay. slam attacks. Um, so he's going to... Not hit you. He's going to swing Good. away and not hit Excellent. you. Excellent. That is wonderful. Okay. Um, Zago. Okay. Yeah, literally when I cast the spell, I can designate any number of creatures that I can see to not be affected by it, and I couldn't see you yeah, when I sense. cast it. So if you enter the squares where they are, you have to make a wisdom saving throw or take 3d8 radiant damage. Um, Ouch, well, I'm not going there. Can I, as a bonus action, attempt to make an arcane uh, check to see if I know how they're finding this creature? Sure. Nice. You yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. That is going to be a 20. So there's a large dais in the middle of the room that has several arcane runes on it. And you feel like if you were to... Is it a spell? Um, it, it, it was a ritual at one point, mm -hmm. and how it's being held in place now is through the effects of the ritual. So you could okay. disrupt the ritual by monkeying with the the thing, the dais. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was a bonus. As my standard action, I'm keeping jagged crown on that guy. Okay. And then as a move, I actually kind of like where I'm at at the moment, to be honest. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at though. Okay. Um. All right. So it is his turn. He's gonna attack the hack again. Um, is he Jason? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's gonna attack the hack. Um, that, those two aren't gonna hit. That one will, though. So he does, um, he does seven damage to her. She can't redirect it, which sucks. <laughs> um, because she already used that one. Um, so that is... Um, okay, and then the other one is going to move forward and this one? yeah, and get to adjacent to one of you guys, It'll which is closest. Okay. It'll be both, yeah. So he's gonna make three attacks on uh, Vizago. Does that put him in your? It does, but I have to ask Shad about the way that I did it. it. Technically, I guess they're not supposed to take damage until the start of their turns. Okay. And then it's at the beginning of each turn that they start in. Okay. So. I don't want to gimmick it because they already took the damage that okay. would have been for their turn. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so an 18, does that hit 18 hits. Aaron? Um, an 11, probably not gonna nope. hit. Nope. Okay, so the third attack is not gonna hit as well, 13. Okay. So eight damage. Okay. Um, all right, so that is them, Sarsarel. So do you want me to roll the damage at the beginning of my turn or just this round? Anything you can that roll starts the damage at the beginning of your turn. Okay, because it's like net the same. Yeah. So they still have to make the same wisdom DC okay. 17. Nope. Okay, so this time it is uh, 17 damage. Okay, the one that is Crown of Madness dies. Um, and the 
other one takes 17 damage. And the hag? And I didn't roll for the hag yet. Uh, she got a 13, so that she's going to take 17 damage. Perfect. Okay. And then should I go ahead and attack this little gnomey guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The one I was controlling is dead. So. Okay. There, so. It's open season on him again. I'm going to, yeah, just use my trident. Uh, that is a 25 to hit. Yeah, that okay. hits. So he is going to take. What if I said it didn't hit? I'd be pretty concerned. Uh, so that is a total of 13 damage from electrical. Okay, he takes the 13 damage. He's not happy about it. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so we're to the hags. Let's see. So they've got at least one third level spell left. Or fourth level spell left, sorry. Um, do the hags, like... Do they get stronger? Like, if we kill one, do the other two get weaker? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Hags are not always found in a coven, so that might, like, you can find one. So I don't, I don't know that oh, they, okay, okay. they exist in... In solo. Yeah. Okay. The reason that they're able to cast up to six level spells, though, is because they're a coven. So um, the one that's uh, invisible is going to no longer be invisible. She's going to cast um, a spell on Doug. Doug, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. I hope you make it. Yeah, me too. You have a D8 if it rolls, if it rolls well. I do? Uh-huh. Cool. Uh, well, that is a 21. Okay. You are not polymorphed. <laughs> Still not They're polymorphed. Really like that spell. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got, like, I gave them a lot of it's a good divination one. spells, mm -hmm. so okay. those are not super great in combat. Sure. Um, but what she's going to do is she's going to use a portent. So um, instead, you got a four plus your wisdom modifier. That would be an eight, but I get a D8 on top of that. You sure do. So that's a 14. You are a lizard, my friend. Oh, no. Do you have a little lizard mini? No, but I got Enzo. Does Enzo eat you? I don't know, but oh, I'll, I love I'll use Enzo for now. Um, and at this point, mm -hmm. they will say, I think we've had about enough of you. They say that? Yes. Uh, Nanny, uh, Granny Morgan says, now we can kill your friend. That is easy to do. The lizard? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or we can allow you to be on your way and never speak of us again. So they're offering a lot of scale. What about this? What about these two uh, humans you got trapped here with you? Oh, they're definitely dead. Does that kind of feel bad just leaving them? Oh, Do you want to make an insight check? Yeah. Okay. Just to see like the general nature of how banged up these guys are. Uh, I did really well, so that's an eleven. Okay. What if I? I not do very what well. if I gave you that? Sure, you can reroll. That's a little That's bit better. 24? Okay. So one hag is not hurt at all. Okay. One hag has taken almost 40 damage and is not yet bloodied. Oh, jeez. Um, the chronomental has not taken any damage. Yeah. Right. Um, you feel like, I don't know what how many hit points you have or you have. Yeah. What are you guys looking at? I'm not doing great, but I'm not. I'm bloodied. I'm down 10. Yeah. Okay. You feel like... This could be a protracted fight. Um, Aaron, why don't you make a Arcana check for me sure. as well? Not great again. Uh, okay. Yeah. You believe that what they say about being able to kill um, Xenos fairly easily in his yeah. lizardy form. <laughs> Step on him. Um, so. So we'll just it, take the lizard, put him in our pocket, and make our way out. Yep. That seems. Fair. I look at the guy on the altar. Maybe in your next life, make better choices. Mm -hmm. Stealing from us, clearly not a good idea. Uh, we tried. So, um, you leaving? 
Sure, sure. No. Should I thunder wave the table on the way out? <laughs> uh, no. Can I tell you what you should thunder wave on the way out? Yeah. The stylus. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. That wouldn't. That wouldn't disrupt it. Um, oh, okay. So, it would have to be like. Like, if you had Foxfire here, he could be all over that, disabling those oh, devices, sure. Oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, so, we're a little bit over, but we're going to go ahead and finish up. So, you guys okay. know the location of the yeah. thieves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they uh, still have the spyglass. They still have the spyglass. Okay. Okay. Um, you, How do we get him unpolymorphed? Does remove remove curse do that? Oh, okay, okay. Um, so... Polymorph goes for a, a specific amount of time, and the reason why I was going to have Aaron roll is he, Doug had the hit points of whatever he got transformed yeah. into, but if he takes damage, it just ends the polymorph. So they were actually bluffing oh, really? being able yeah. to kill him easily. That's, the way That's what happened with um, the druid, wasn't it? He would get... No, well, I guess not. Yeah. He would turn it's himself sim back. It's a similar, it's similar effect. But he had but two different yeah, exactly. hit point oh, pools. Two different pools yeah, hit points. so Doug had... Anywhere from one to five hit I points. I don't know how wizards cast know. spells work. And they were bluffing. So um, it doesn't matter either way, though. We had dealt forty we damage to that one, and she wasn't bloodied. Yeah. yeah. No, there was insane. no way we could win that fight. Yeah. Well, we needed her. help. What? <laughs> if it was just her. If it was just her. Oh yeah, yeah. we got it. <laughs> if it was just one instead of three, and they weren't casting like six level spells. Yeah. yeah. So with yeah. that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, break for the night. Uh, yeah. We will join you back with a fuller crew. Uh, unfortunately, Xenos is going to be a lizard for some time. Um, but it's hilarious. But I don't know. All um, it takes is him we doing will one get, annoying uh, lizard thing, and I Fox like Fire <laughs> and um, and. Cirque back next week. Yep. Um, and we'll, we'll continue on with our fun and antics. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, we're, we're just a little